What's up you guys? I got something really special for you. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys at the beach. All right you guys, so I don't know if you can hear me because the wind noise, but we are at the beach and we are going to experience a phenomenon. So every once in a while, lobster will end up migrating along the beaches of the coast and that is what is happening right now. There are lines of lobsters literally in the sand just crawling in the open ocean in single file line and this is a great opportunity to harvest lobsters they're absolutely everywhere i've never experienced this or seen it before so i'm stoked we're gonna get in the water i'm pumped i get to bring you guys with me all right everyone so thanks for watching the vid and i'm gonna give you guys a little insight on how i shore dive i keep it very simple because everything I take with me is stuff that I'm going to bring in the water with me. So I'm not gonna leave anything on the beach so I don't have to worry about it or try to track it down after I get out of the water. So I keep it very simple. You can see what I have here is I have my gloves, I have a snare, my fins, and what I'm putting in my pocket right now is some extra defog. That's the only kind of extra thing that I have with me. But with my weight belt that I have, you can see I already have my belt reel, which I can always hook to a dive flag, and then my dive knife on the back. And I'm using a little bit of weight. I'm not rocking a wetsuit on this dive. Um, and also, the, another thing I have is my GoPro, and it's actually mounted on a weight on a little GoPro grip arm. So I, I can adjust it, I can set it down on the ground uh, in the sand and kind of get some extra third person view uh, you can see how simple I keep it just a handful of things when I'm doing these shore dives and that's a big tip that I can give to anybody else doing shore dives out there go 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 Woo, it's cold Ooh, it's cold, chilly. Make sure, rule number one, dive with a dive flag. Or dive with somebody responsible enough to have a dive flag, right there. So we get in the water and we even out the load. Spencer is in charge of the dive flag since I will be doing the catching of the lobster. He already got his limit earlier in the day. And then sure enough, once we get in the water, we see a huge school of pompano cruising through. And that's what I absolutely love about these shore dives is how much life you see. And it's always fun just getting out there and being a part of the water and enjoying the experience. That's awesome freaking pompano. Just loaded off the beach. Sick. It did not take long to see the first line of lobster. And you see it, it's almost like they're a centipede and they kind of don't even look like, like lobster when they're down there. So I'm assuming that's some kind of tactic they use. Uh, I set the GoPro down. I end up really wanting to get this, catching this lobster in the view. So I scooted him over, kind of rushed it, got just enough a bit of the tail and secured our first lobster for the day. And I'll tell you guys, I absolutely love using the snare. It is very minimal and I'm all about that. Keep things simple, especially when you're in the water because there's a lot of kind of things that can go wrong. Um, on this drop, I go ahead and catch this guy. Same thing, I I don't put, I, I was gonna put my GoPro down, but this guy just kept taking off. So I go ahead and bring it with me. And you see the trick is you just get this snare, drop it right behind the tail and then scoop them on up. And this is still the same lot of uh, lobster that we were kind of chasing before. There were a couple more in the school, and I kind of, or school, I don't even know what to call them, in the crawl of them. <laughs> but you can see me get this one, and then, um, and then I end up checking out one more that's in that little line of lobster. And uh, you can see how I measure them. And uh, this is the way you do it. I'm able to set the GoPro down on this one, get the snare, pull it tight. And now once you get a hold of the lobster, you grab a, I usually tie my measure on the back of my uh, snare. And uh, what you do is you measure the length of the carapace. And it has to be three inches. Dude, 
That's so cool. Isn't that crazy? They're so like it's perfectly in sync. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, uh, that last one was short. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so. Let's just go. Let's see what's fun is depth. Okay. Let's see if we go to the top to find more. Okay. Cool. So we get back after it, and it's only been maybe 10 minutes we've been in the water. And you see from the surface, it's like a little snake just cruising along the sand. And we're only in about, we're in less than 15 feet of water, almost around 10 feet. You get a great third person view right here. I end up getting a double snag on this. And I, like, want, like I said, I love the snare. I mean, you could go with the net, but I don't like nets because they get tangled, they get hung up. And uh, also you have to get keep track of a tickle stick. Yeah, look at that. Two quality lobster. I'm stoked. Now, Spencer wanted to get on the action, but he had no interest in catching any. This guy was short, so we kind of just messing around with him, just enjoying being in the water, enjoying the sea life. And um, there's always a, an appreciation of the creatures that you're catching. And I think that's what's really special about freediving. It kind of lets you see everything in its natural habitat. And you kind of become a part of that by being a predator and enjoying the fruits of your labor when you harvest these things sustainably. And yeah, that's what I do the rest of this trip. Kind of just messing around in the water, have a little pilot fish swimming around with me the whole time, seeing a bunch of crevals cruising through, just loving loving the um, the kind of scenery here on just this short little we were probably in the water maybe 20 30 minutes total um, and uh, I ended up not getting my full limit but I mean even look at this just as simple as looking at a really pretty jellyfish I just really enjoying your time on these shore dives all right so we made it back and that was absolutely insane that was so cool that was just how I described it was exactly how it was. I didn't get my limit. I actually could have, honestly. Um, but I was kind of like, oh, whatever. I'll take my time, pick the biggest one. And uh, I only got four, but I usually could have gotten six right off the bat. But uh, I didn't stay with the lines that I was on. And uh, I just kind of let them go. But I'm not going to be picky. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm happy that we could get in the water and see something really magnificent. And I'm so stoked I was able to bring you guys with me. So we're going to wrap it up here at the beach. I'm gonna see you back in my place and I'm gonna show you how to cook up those lobster. All right, everybody, we're back in my house. We're at my pond, got the cooler in tow, chickens all around. We're gonna head out here and I'm gonna show you how to kind of process these lobster. So, I'm gonna keep it nice and easy. These guys have actually sat for a whole day in ice, so they, basically fell asleep. I'm gonna feed the remaining carcasses. Oh, they ran out of ice. I'm gonna feed the remaining carcasses to my fish. One of them just stroke right there. Also, if you haven't seen that pond video, scroll back. I actually dove this thing with a brownie third lung and uh, I kind of saw all the fish and turtles and all the cool stuff in here. So if you haven't seen that video, check that out. And also, if you have any cool ideas that I could do with the pond, go ahead and uh, shout them out in the comments. I'd like to see what you guys have idea wise. Um, I'm trying to get this thing balanced here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna kind of want to see what you guys have idea wise of uh, pond ideas. Oh my God, that thing might fall. That'll be all right. All right, well, let's get into these lobster. It was a nice little day, little afternoon on the water. Um, so how you do these lobsters, these guys fell asleep nice and easy. What you do, Easiest way, get a knife, stick it in the top, kind of cut away from the middle out, from the middle out, like that. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. I don't know, I don't know how to do anything. But you basically stick the knife in, cut around that way, stick the knife in, cut around that way. And then from there, all you do is twist and drop that sucker back in the water. I don't like just throwing this in the trash. I'd rather give it back to the environment, whether it's fresh water, salt water, something like that. But let's see. If, oh, the fish are gonna go crazy. There we go. Number one. Oh my God, chickens are gonna probably try to eat this thing. We'll see. All right, there's one. We got three more to go. I'll do one more for you guys. 
a little up close action. All right, so here you go. Stick it in, top, little saw to the left, or sorry, to the right, top, little saw to the left, and this just kind of loosens it up. Sometimes if I have a lot, I'll just twist. You might lose a little bit of meat, but this is the best way. You really make sure you cut off all the everything. Oh, and you don't want to forget, you got to de-vein these guys, which is you want to grab these antennas. Make sure when you throw in the water, you don't throw the tail. That's happened to me before. Um, so yeah, get the vein or get the, uh, to get the vein, you get a whip. They have little prickers on them. You stick it in the booty hole and you want to get basically the poop shoot out. This is like the intestines, the little booty. You get it at least started and you can grab it and just slide it out with your hands. That's probably the easiest way. And then you just grab it at the base, rip it out. You see the fish go crazy. Maybe, maybe they're not into it. We'll see. All right, I'm gonna do these last two. I'm gonna save the poop shoot so you can see the fish go berserk whenever I feed it to them. Okay, let's see if they go after it. Boom, smoked. There's probably a brim or a, uh, or a cichlid or a tilapia, something like that. But yeah, if you have any ideas to do with the pond, let me know in the comments below. But we got the tails ready to rock. I'll see you guys in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you the best way to cook these to where you can use them for multiple different like recipes and you can do it kind of cook them all at once so they're nice and fresh. You don't have to freeze them. Um, and then you can eat them like all week different ways. So I'll see you guys in the kitchen. So here it is guys, super easy. Got a little pot, filled it up halfway with water. Got the tails, depending on how many tails you have is gonna depend on how much water you put in. The water is about to boil, and I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this Southern Palate Seafood Boil. One of my subscribers gave me this, and it's been awesome. Little spicy, but very good. So now I'm only gonna add like maybe a tablespoon or so. I never really measure, ever. Maybe, a little more. All right, well, maybe a little more. I like flavor. All right, this thing is almost to a rolling boil, and it is so simple. You ready for the secret? To cook the lobster perfectly, once this gets to a rolling boil, which it basically almost is, you're gonna put all the lobster in. You're gonna leave it uncovered, and you shut the burner off. That's it. And you let it sit for one hour, and then everything will be nice and cool. This is basically done. So right now, it's boiling, it's looking good. Tails are going in. One, two, three, just enough room. Four, let me make sure I try, try to put that guy down in there. Okay. All right, that's all it is. Now, we shut it off, that's it. And now the trick is you never wanna overcook lobsters and this is the way you do it. It is gonna sit there, marinate in that seafood boil and it's gonna slowly, slowly cook through for one hour. We're gonna set the timer and I'll see you guys back when I'm pulling them out of the pot. It has been a solid hour and now I'm gonna show you how to get these guys out of their shell. So we dump off all the remaining boil, which kind of dries these guys out. Look at that, they're already falling off. I'm gonna try this. So perfect, so tender. You can't go wrong. So you're gonna lay them flat, grab a pair of shears. I have these kitchen shears. Stick it in the top. You're gonna crack all the way down, at least as far as you can. Try not to make a mess. Then you're gonna pull this apart. And that'll expose the meat. You just reach in, grab the meat, pull it, and it'll kind of just pull from the tail. Like that. All right, so you're now gonna have this nice chunky lobster meat. Throw away the carcass, and then you repeat that, well, three more times. Just wanna tell you a little trick is there's a lot of little pieces of fragments of the shell, the carcass that get kind of exploded when you're crunching on these with the shears. The trick is go ahead and don't go super far down the entire thing. The trick is not to go down the entire thing. You wanna go just over halfway. You don't wanna force it. 
and then you'll peel that part back and then you'll just pull the rest out of the remaining shell. And that way you don't keep shattering pieces of the carcass and then you end up having to pull those out later or you catch them in your meal. So you pinch and then just pull and then it'll come literally right out of the shell. Just found that out a little while ago. Um, Cause yeah, you do not want these little pieces. That'll ruin your appetite, ruin your meal. Especially if you have a bunch of those in there. Not very pleasing, especially when you throw them in a salad or something like that. Keeping it simple is what I'm talking about. This is the aftermath. I'm gonna go ahead and little, have a little appetizer. Some lobster salad. I got mayonnaise, spicy brown mustard, and then my favorite hot sauce, which it could be any of your favorite hot sauce. And then I'm also gonna have lobster with a salad. And then I just got some avocado, some lettuce, some greens, some uh, tomatoes, and I got some Greek dressing on it. And then I'm gonna top every, oh, and this is all the extra. So I'll go ahead and make either do the salad or the lobster salad, but I'm gonna top it off with this lemon that I got from my garden earlier today. It is about that time of year, so I'm gonna put some Meyer lemon on top of this salad and then also the lobster salad. And man, you're not gonna go wrong with this. Uh oh, got a seed in there. There we go. All right. Now it is time to churn all this stuff up. All right, salad time. I love salad. <laughs> mm. The lobster gives it like um, like a almost like a chicken flavor. Doesn't really overtake the salad in the salad dressing, which is nice. Now it's time for the lobster salad, and I just chopped this stuff up kind of as small as I could. I guess I kind of hit the salad before the appetizer. Mm. -mm. Our show. Even as careful as I am, it's still gonna happen. But, God, I kind of went a little heavy on the ingredients on the lobster salad. God, that's freaking good. And I'm probably in the future gonna just stick with this. I'm not gonna season it as much with the um, spicy mustard and the mayonnaise. But God, that's so good. I think um, the mayonnaise and the Brown mustard kind of drowned it out. And that's just a taste. I don't do any measurements on that or anything like that. But I hope you guys liked this adventure. It was something new and it was really new for me, the phenomenon of those freaking lobster. It was like a little centipede snake in the sand. I've never seen that before. Check that off the bucket list. Stoked I was able to see it. And I'm really happy I was able to show, show it and share it with you guys because that's what this is all about. So. Please share this video, try to grow the channel. Maybe I won't be self-filming my dinners and I can maybe afford a full-time cameraman or something, but that's, that's just a dream. Thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Comment below if you have any questions, like this video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys next week for another adventure, later.